Um, good morning, everyone. I guess this would be a good time for some introductions. Um, since I started running my mouth first, I'll start. My name is Trila. I am the Kata Containers Community Manager um, person thing. Hi, nice to meet you all. Uh, who are you all? And I'm really grateful that you're here, so I'm excited to know something about you. Yeah, thank you, Triva. Since I'm co-hosting this session, I can go second. My name is Georg Link. I'm the director of sales at Biturgia. If you watched the last session, you already got to hear me talk about the metrics and dashboards and the partnership that Biturgia has with the Open Infra Foundation. Um, I'm based in Omaha, Nebraska. I live here by choice and super excited to, to join with you all today. Anyone else would like to introduce themselves? Totally optional. They, Me. No. <laughs> Me. Hello. Um, I am Gloria Palma. I am from Mexico. I am very happy to be here. Um, of course, share this moment with the Kata community. Um, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge in this meeting. Yeah, great to have you. Hello, I am Guillermo. I am from Mexico too. I am an early adopter of OpenStack since uh, 2012. So I am excited to see the evolution of all the infra, open infra projects like Kata Containers. I'm very glad to be here at the Open Infra Day in Mexico. Awesome, great to have you. Anyone else would like to introduce themselves? All right. Again, this is voluntary. We're not going to call on anyone. Well, it's great to have you all here. I think we should just get started. Um, we posted in the Slack that anyone who wanted to see this or participate can join us here. So even if it's not streaming, I think we are doing fine here. And I, I assume we have a recording for later. So I'm going back to two things that the first two um, presentations were about. Allison, at the end of her keynote was talking about the services available to open infra projects and project hosting. And when we go to community management, there is an, one of the services, community metrics dashboard by Biturgia. And so this is the reason why we are talking about this and what we are doing here. And we have the Kata containers dashboard ready and open to to talk with you about what we're seeing here. That's the goal for today. Um, I want to give you a little bit more background of where the software came from, where the dashboards came from, how they're developed, community metrics, because there is an open source community, the Chaos Project at the Linux Foundation that focuses on community health analytics for open source software. And this community we started five years ago to bring everyone together who has an interest in healthy and sustainable communities and how do we use metrics to look at them. So if you want to know more about metrics and the software, come here. So the software specifically that Petrugia is using and that Open Infra is using is Grimoire Lab. So when you go to Software Grimoire Lab and you want to go and take a look at the open source software and maybe use it yourself, feel free to, to go here. It looks like there is uh, the link was not working. Okay, so it's here. You can take a look. It's right there and open. The other part that the chaos community does is defines metrics. 
So you can come here to the metrics page and has more than 70 metrics defined. So if you're looking at how do I look at an open source community, here are 70 ideas for metrics to look at. I don't want to go into more detail than this. I just wanted to let you know this is some of the context that we're working in where you can learn more. Now, for today's session, we want to be super interactive. We want you to chime in, talk with us. This is not a one-way presentation. Uh, at least that's the plan. And so at any point, feel free to raise your hand, write in the chat, open your microphone, interrupt. It's all fair game. And we want to work with you and have this conversation with you about the metrics on the Kata Containers community. Now I'll continue talking and start showing you a few things. And if you watched the last video, this looks familiar. We have, when we go to the community metrics dashboard, we have a few things here. At the top, we have a menu where we can go look at different data sources, look at different information about the community, like attraction, retention, people coming, joining the community, but also leaving again. Um, activity, like where's the activity in the project? And then also performance, like how quickly are we turning around code reviews or how long are issues open? So there are a lot of different things that we can look at. We have a date picker here at the top where we can specify what time frame we want to analyze and see the community activity for. And then we have here these red beans or pills, those are filters, and we can add more filters. We can also add filters by clicking in here. So if you want interested in seeing only what's happening in the community, repository, for example, we can add this filter by clicking in here. And it's everything is interactive. Now the filter is applied. And we can see the activity that is happening there. One of the nice things that we see here is who are the organizations, who are the people involved, and what are they doing? Because my, my understanding is Kata Containers turns five. And so if you look at the last five years, we can see, OK, Intel is very strong, engaged, and financial, and then unknown. So these two, from my understanding, and please chime in and correct me, is our founding members of the project. And we can see down here corporate diversity evolution who made proposed changes over time. And this green is Intel. We can see the of all changes, 100% um, normalized, the proportion from Intel is going down. In other words, what others are contributing is going up. So the community is becoming more and more diverse in who is contributing which is great you know over 5 years being able to get more organizations and others to come in and join and participate that's really good for the sustainability of the project now i'm i'm going to pause here there's a lot more we can dig into but i want to create the opportunity for anyone else to chime in What are you seeing, or what, what would you be interested in seeing? What interests you about the community? So, Triva, maybe you have a few thoughts on corporate diversity over time. I, I know I'm putting you on the spot. Just want to see, since you're the community manager, if you have some thoughts there. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning part of your question. What was that? 
Oh, we were just showing the metrics around corporate diversity, and we are seeing how Intel's proportional contributions is going down, or in other terms, how other companies are more and more contributing. And so I just want to see if you had some thoughts on interpreting this data or on the strategy of the community that has led to this result that we are seeing now in the data. So it's been interesting to say the least, but Baturtia has been an invaluable tool as far as figuring out where the majority of our contributions come from. Um, I lost my words for a second, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if we lost you or if you just paused. I think audio dip it, sorry. Um, so can you give me a moment? I got to yes. get some text. All right, while we wait for Trevor to come back, um, we'll look at the data in a different way. So what we were seeing down here is all the proposed changes, issues created, mailing list posts, um, normalized to 100% to see the proportion that each organization had. A uh, different view that we can take is absolute numbers. So how do contributions over time look in absolute numbers? And this is, I just went here, data sources, I'm looking at Git. So this is changes made and recorded in the Git log. And what we see here over, what time frame do we have? We still have five years. Okay, I always make sure that we check what time frame we're analyzing because some dashboards have preset time frames and it resets what we just said. So always make sure to go back up here and take a look when you're looking at the community metrics. And we see that, yes? There is a way to see all the commits by organization, like in the donut, but see that distribution in the var uh, view. So you want to see, let's say, only one organization? Is that the question? No, I, I want to see uh, how many uh, commits are from Intel, or are from Apple, or the different organizations in a single view. OK. Yeah, so we have down here a table by organizations and number of commits, and then here are the organizations. All right, yeah, that yeah. that was the question, thank you. Perfect. So yeah, thanks for asking. Um, to give you a more background on the data that is in the dashboard, we are collecting all the activities that are happening on the Git log in Garrett and on the mailing list, and we can, slice and dice and group and display the data in many different ways. And so if you have a question like, can I see it grouped by organization and then count the number of commits, like what you just asked, the answer is yes, we can do that. And I, I'm just lucky that we have this view right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Is there a question that you wanted to ask of this data, not just see this view, but why was this view interesting? Well, I just wanted to see how much different are uh, the number of commits from Intel and from the other organizations. Mm -hmm. And I, I can see there, are, uh, there is a huge difference, right? Yes. And this is for five years, right? Over five years, and Intel being one of the founding members, they, of course, had you know, especially in the beginning, a lot of time to make a lot of contributions. And so if you want to see the ratio, it might be more accurate to look at, let's say, the last year. What does the community look like right now? 
And now, over the last year, that gap is not as big as it yeah. is if you look at the entire history of the project. Right. OK. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. And you know, one of the things with looking at long time frame, so I'm looking again at the five years, so the whole history of the project. If we exclude, let's say, Intel as a founding member and Ant Financial, I think, as another founding member, this is what we were looking at in the previous video, how over time the number of commits from other con other organizations has been going up. So Triva, are you are you back? I think so. And I apologize for that earlier. Um, what I was going to say was is that Petergia has been an invaluable tool in finding places where we can form new relationships, speaking of the foundation. And um finding those people who will be advocates for the Kata Containers project and also for improving relationships with our strongest contributors. Um, we were talking about it before the, the stream started um, using Viturgia to find some information on, um, I, I guess I won't call them out by name quite yet, but there's going to be some exciting, um, another company that's, that's very deeply involved with Kata Containers, using Viturgia to find that info, to give them their flowers, basically to congratulate them and to present for another opening for days that I hope that at least some of you were able to see. Um, I'm going to stop rambling now. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that comes to mind when, when you say that, again, I, I don't know who you picked out or anything, so I'm just looking at the data and what we can look at here for the community is when did people first get involved and also when did they stop being active when did they make their last contribution and so this view here again under community attraction retention and this dashboard is is public if you want to if you want to follow along here i'll put in the chat you can open it up and um, go there and look at, through the data yourself and then ask questions as we are having this session right now. So one of the views that we have here is the developers getting inactive and specifically inactive six months ago. And the One of the reasons we created this view was for a customer that wanted to thank people who were in the community but became inactive. So they needed to know, OK, who stopped contributing? And then also follow up with them on what made you stop? Is there something going on in the community that made you not want to participate anymore? Or did you just have changed jobs and your focus changed? Or did you get the contribution in that you were really passionate about? and? you're all happy and all, it's all good. So knowing who becomes inactive in a community, you can then reach out and learn from them. So that's an, one idea. Last attracted developers, we can see who became active here. March, I think I should turn this around. So we can see who made their first commit in the last August, July. Again, maybe we want to make sure to focus on them and welcome them and say, hey, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on your first commit. And grow the community that way by really being inclusive and welcoming. I'm just making suggestions. Uh, some of the data, what this data can show. Again, I'm. I'm taking this really slow so that you can all chime in and ask questions at any time. We still have, I believe, 10 more minutes. So plenty of time to, to go in any direction that you find interesting. I have another question. 
Uh, yes. There is a way to filter that commits uh, to know how many of them landed to the main branch, or this view is just taking uh, an overall uh, commits account. So let's take a look at this, and I, I'm not going to say I have the answer for you because I don't know exactly how it's set up. So let's see if we can find out. One of the things that we do, so I, I went to discover. And discover is a way to look at the raw data and figure out what is actually in the data. And my goal is to figure out, do we even have multiple branches or is all the data we have on the main branch? Because it's very possible that we don't even have the development branches or feature branches or whatever in here. Um, again, this is where your knowledge of the project and how it's set up would come really handy. So I know that the Git log is in the Git index. And I can look at one data set here. Each, each uh, entry has a set of, um, what are they called, attributes set of attributes. And I am looking to see if it says what branch it's for. I don't see a branch information. So it might just be all the information here is on the main branch or the default branch. You know, Some still yeah. use master as the default branch. OK. Um, there is, we do have an analysis to look at branches also. Um, so, but, but that, I don't think that's enabled here. So to answer your question, we, we can go back and talk with the engineers who have this set up and who know exactly what data is in here. From what I'm seeing is all the commits are on the main branch. Does that satisfy your curiosity? Yeah, yeah thank, you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Awesome. I am curious, uh, and I don't know if am I wrong, but that looks like an Elasticsearch index. Sorry, say it again, please. Elasticsearch index. Yeah, my question is that if what we are looking is like an Elasticsearch index, yes. it looks like. That's exactly okay. what it is. So the dashboard software is a flavor of Kibana, and the data is stored in an Elasticsearch cluster. And so yeah, what, what we see here on the left, these are indexes that index documents. And each document is one entry, one data entry that has these attributes or these fields. Now, this is very technical, and I'm not entirely sure that I'm representing it correctly. But if you're familiar with it and you say, yes, this sounds good, then, then I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the dashboard runs two databases. One is for the activity data that we're looking at right now. And that's what's powering all of the, the visualizations and the numbers. And the other database is for contributors and affiliations. And so we have a relational database in the back end. Um, if you have the password, it's password protected to go in because it has um, more personal information and so for data privacy that's stored away from the public instance. But that's where we manage, okay, what organization is someone affiliated with? Um, what's their email address? Is it a bot account? Is it not a bot account? And we can see that. So two databases powering this dashboard. Let's see, another thing that I always 
like to look at is performance to see the efficiency in uh, code reviews and issues. And we can see here over the last year, average time to first attention. So which is how long until someone posted a comment on a new issue or code change. So five days. Average time to close is 17 days. So from when someone makes a suggestions or posts something until it's resolved on average 17 days. Now, averages, if we know statistics, averages are always skewed by outliers. A more accurate understanding of the community is median. So median is, if we look at all the data that we have, what is exactly in the middle? So 50% have less, 50% have more. And that gives a more accurate uh, understanding of the community because half of the um, interactions are faster and half of them are slower. Whereas average, if we have one that is open a thousand days, you know, on average, that's going to skew it really bad. And so median, it takes a third of a day for someone to respond. That's fast. Kata containers community is super fast. And then median time to close is under four days. So within the same week, you all are managing to have a conversation and make decisions, which is really good for engagement. If you have community this quickly resolving things, when someone says, oh, I have this idea, I'll bounce it off others, and let's, let's make things happen. That's the kind of interaction that, that sparks that excitement in people. Now, this is general speaking, you know, I'm speaking in general about open source. My, curios my, my curiosity here is, is that your experience as well in the Kata Containers community? Do you feel like, yes, there is a vibrant interaction back and forth going on? I guess I'll start. <laughs> um. So I'm community manager, but I just very recently came on and as a quote unquote outsider who's now sort of an insider watching the way that the community responds to questions, to requests, to issues, it is quite remarkable. Um, I've been around in open source for a while, um, been involved with OpenStack mostly, um, and I'm very much impressed with the way that the Kata community handles everything um very responsive very welcoming very warm which is something that you don't really hear when you're talking about software development so that's my perspective but i'd love to hear others perspectives yeah hey so uh Alvaro here um actually i i spend like every day on the kind of containers slack channel like a slack uh workspace um you are pretty much right like every time that someone asks a questions or even if it's like in some way mistaken on the on what channel you are putting the question or you are saying something they will lead you to the correct way or correct way to approach the community to correct like a channel to be able to to put that that question in order to be able to get an answer from anyone like uh it's really hard to see sometimes like communities like that when you throw like a question and sometimes there are a lot of community when you don't get an answer in here at least you will get like hey like that is something that is on github go and check this one or if you need like more information they will like start working with you in order to get like things going and even with random questions like hey the, the other day i was talking with the guys and, and i was like hey i have seen like a few projects out there when in order to get like people to start working with the community they have a specific tax 
or like labels on GitHub to be able to like to to get like easy like easy issues to start working with the community and they were like yeah like we haven't had that much issues like with those labels but indeed we have the labels on going on on like in the in the github so that is pretty impressive that they are like working on really heavy and complicated things but they do have like some of the easy things for the community to be able to start working with the project so that is like like i said really impressive yeah thank you for sharing that ah uh, by the way i do recommend to like join the slack work workspace because like the irc channel is pretty much like it doesn't have too many people but uh in the cara container slack workspace is like a bunch of people like every day saying stuff and uh, they have a lot of a lot of hooks to be able to understand like commits and stuff like that so yeah excellent just gonna put it out there that joining irc is acceptable also it hooks into the cara container slack channel but if you'd like to join the slack or irc i just posted a link to the invite over in the chat but we'd love to see you there excellent now with a look at the clock i believe we are at the end of our session time so thank you for joining everyone super awesome to have you here happy to continue the conversation at a later time in slack or wherever you know how to find trevor if you look for me i'm also in slack so yeah thank you for being here today Thanks Enjoy so the rest much. of your open info Thank day. You. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thank you. See ya. Goodbye. See you. Thank you, George. Bye. Welcome. Bye.